A Life Remembered, Rachel Corey's Journey of Peace and Activism Rachel Alien Corey, April 10, 1979 to March 16, 2003, was an American activist and diarist who gained international attention due to her tragic death in the Gaza Strip during the Second Intifada. She was a member of the pro-Palestinian group International Solidarity Movement, ISM. Corey went to Gaza as part of her college senior year independent study proposal, with the goal of establishing a connection between her hometown and Rafah as sister cities. During her time in Gaza, she actively joined other ISM activists in their efforts to prevent the Israeli demolition of Palestinian properties, which the Israeli authorities claimed was necessary to eliminate weapons smuggling tunnels, but human rights groups argued that these demolitions were a form of collective punishment. The circumstances surrounding Corey's death are disputed. According to fellow ISM activists, an Israeli soldier operating an armored bulldozer deliberately ran over Corey, whereas Israeli eyewitnesses claimed it was an accident due to limited visibility from the bulldozer's cab. The Israeli army conducted an investigation that concluded Corey's death was an accident. However, this was criticized by international human rights organizations, including Amnesty International, Human Rights Watch, Selim, and Yesh Din. In 2005, Corey's parents filed a civil lawsuit against the State of Israel, alleging that Israel failed to conduct a full and credible investigation and held responsibility for her death. They contended that Corey had either been intentionally killed or that the soldiers had acted with reckless neglect. The lawsuit sought a symbolic U.S. dollar in damages. An Israeli court rejected their suit in August 2012, upholding the results of the 2003 military investigation. This ruling was met with criticism from human rights organizations and activists. An appeal against this ruling was heard on May 21, 2014, and on February 14, 2015, the Supreme Court of Israel rejected the appeal. Corey's case remains a subject of controversy and debate, highlighting the complexities of the Israeli-Palestinian conflict and the challenges of seeking justice in such circumstances. Early Life Rachel Alien Corey was born on April 10, 1979, in Olympia, Washington, United States, and was raised in a typical American family. She was the youngest of three children born to Craig Corey, an insurance executive, and Cindy Corey. Her family described themselves as average Americans, politically liberal, economically conservative, middle class. Corey's educational journey led her to graduate from Capitol High School in Olympia. She then pursued higher education at the Evergreen State College, also in Olympia, where she focused on arts courses. During her academic path, she took a break from her studies to work as a volunteer in the Washington State Conservation Corps. Additionally, according to the International Solidarity Movement, ISM, she dedicated three years of her life to making weekly visits to mental patients, demonstrating her commitment to helping others. While attending Evergreen State College, Corey became a committed peace activist. She organized peace events in collaboration with a local pro-ASM group known as Olympians for Peace and Solidarity. Later, she decided to join the International Solidarity Movement, ISM, to engage in protests against the policies of the Israeli army in the West Bank and Gaza Strip. In her senior year, Corey proposed an independent study program in which she planned to travel to Gaza, join the ISM team, and initiate a sister city project between Olympia and Rafa. Before leaving for her mission in Gaza, she also organized a pen pal program that connected children from Olympia with their counterparts in Rafa. Rachel Alien Corey's early life and journey to activism illustrate her dedication to humanitarian causes and her commitment to advocating for peace in conflict-affected regions. Activities in the Palestinian Territories During her time in Rafa, Rachel Corey engaged in various activities aimed at supporting Palestinians and protesting the actions of the Israeli military in the region. Her actions and those of her fellow International Solidarity Movement, ISM, activists were in response to house demolitions and military operations in the area. 
Standing in front of bulldozers, Corey famously stood in front of armored bulldozers to impede house demolitions carried out by the Israeli Defense Forces. These house demolitions were criticized by human rights groups as a form of collective punishment. Israeli authorities claim that the demolitions were necessary to eliminate structures used by Palestinian gunmen for cover or to conceal armed smuggling tunnels under the Gaza-Egypt border. Acting as human shields, Corey and a group of about eight activists from outside the Palestinian territories acted as human shields to prevent the Israeli army's activities. They positioned themselves visibly between Palestinians and Israeli snipers, displaying banners stating that they were internationals. This was done in an attempt to discourage shooting by making the presence of international observers known. Setting up camp in a conflict zone, on her first night in Rafa, Corey and two other ISM members set up camp in Block J, a densely populated neighborhood that was frequently targeted by gunfire from Israeli watchtowers. By doing this, they hoped to protect local residents by drawing attention to their presence as internationals. When Israeli soldiers fired warning shots, they dismantled their tent and left the area. Addressing suspicion, Corey and her colleagues faced suspicion from both Palestinian militants and local residents. To address these concerns, Corey learned a few words of Arabic and participated in a mock trial denouncing the actions of the Bush administration. They aimed to show that their intentions were peaceful and humanitarian. These actions by Corey and other ISM activists put their safety at risk as they engaged in confrontations with the Israeli military. The activists' presence and efforts to protect Palestinian communities in Rafah were met with mixed reactions, including concern, suspicion, and support from various groups in the region. Rachel Corey's activities in the Palestinian territories were driven by her commitment to nonviolent activism and her desire to raise awareness about the challenges faced by Palestinians in conflict-affected areas. Water Well Protecting Efforts In January 2003, during the last month of her life, Rachel Corey was actively involved in efforts to protect the Canada Well in Rafah. This well was essential for the local community and had been damaged by Israeli bulldozers. Corey and other International Solidarity Movement, ISM, activists worked alongside Rafa municipal workers who were trying to repair the damage to the well. The Canada Well, constructed in 1999 with funding from the Canadian International Development Agency, CEDA, along with El Iskan Well, had been the primary sources of water for over 50% of Rafa's population before the damage occurred. As a result of the damage, Rafa had been suffering from strict water rationing, with only a few hours of running water available on alternate days. ISM activists, including Corey, decided to maintain a presence at the site because Israeli snipers and tanks frequently targeted civilian workers attempting to repair the wells. Corey documented the dangerous conditions at the site in her reports, noting that despite receiving permission from the Israeli District Command Office and carrying banners and megaphones, the activists and workers were fired upon multiple times during the course of about an hour. This put their lives at risk, as bullets came perilously close to them. Controversy over protest against the Iraq War While in Gaza, Rachel Corey participated in a demonstration as part of the February 15, 2003 anti-war protest against the invasion of Iraq. During the protest, she was photographed burning a makeshift U.S. flag. After her tragic death, the ISM released a statement that quoted Corey's parents regarding the widely circulated image of the flag-burning incident. Her parents emphasized that the act, while open to disagreement, must be viewed in the context of her participation in a Gaza demonstration against the Iraq War. During the demonstration, children had drawn two pictures, one of the American flag and one of the Israeli flag, for burning. Rachel chose not to burn the picture of the Israeli flag with the Star of David but did burn the picture of her own flag. Her parents believed that Rachel's action was a form of protest against the war and her government's foreign policy, which she felt was responsible for much of the devastation she witnessed in Gaza. Corey's emails from Gaza to her mother 
Rachel Corey maintained communication with her mother by sending a series of emails while she was in Gaza. Some of these emails were later published by The Guardian. In January 2008, a book titled Let Me Stand Alone by Corey was published, which included her emails, along with other writings. These emails and writings provided insight into her experiences and thoughts during her time in Gaza. Her correspondence became an essential part of her legacy, offering a personal perspective on her mission and her commitment to humanitarian causes. Rachel Corey's story has inspired various artistic works, including the play My Name is Rachel Corey and the cantata The Skies Are Weeping, both of which drew from her letters and experiences. Death and Subsequent Controversy On March 16, 2003, Rachel Corey tragically lost her life during an operation conducted by the Israel Defense Forces, IDF, that involved the demolition of Palestinian houses in Rafah, Gaza. Corey was part of a group of activists from the International Solidarity Movement, ISM, consisting of three British and four American activists, who were attempting to disrupt the IDF operation. Corey took a courageous stand by placing herself in the path of a Caterpillar D9R armored bulldozer. During the course of these events, she was run over by the bulldozer, resulting in fatal injuries. After being injured, Corey was transported by a Red Crescent ambulance to the Palestinian Najjar Hospital, arriving at the emergency room at 5.05 p.m. She was still alive but in critical condition. Sadly, by 5.20 p.m., she was declared dead. The circumstances surrounding Rachel Corey's death have been a subject of dispute. Fellow ISM activists contended that the soldier operating the bulldozer deliberately ran over Corey while she was acting as a human shield to prevent the demolition of the home of a local pharmacist named Samir Nasrallah. According to their accounts, Corey was positioned between the bulldozer and a wall near Nasrallah's home, where ISM activists had spent the night on several occasions. In contrast, an IDF officer testified in court that on the day of the incident, their mission was to clear vegetation and rubble from houses that had previously been demolished, and no new houses were slated for demolition. The main points of contention revolve around whether the bulldozer operator saw Corey and whether her injuries were caused by being crushed under the bulldozer's blade or by the mound of debris the bulldozer was pushing. It was acknowledged by an IDF spokesman that the Caterpillar D9 bulldozers have restricted visibility and blind spots, and therefore, the operators of armored personnel carriers, APCs, accompanying the bulldozers are responsible for directing them towards their targets according to Israeli army regulations. Rachel Corey's tragic death and the disputed circumstances surrounding it have given rise to significant controversy and debate, both nationally and internationally, regarding the events that took place on that fateful day. Accounts of the Incident Multiple ISM activists and eyewitnesses provided various accounts of the incident in which Rachel Corey tragically lost her life. Their testimonies shed light on the events leading up to her death and the actions taken to protect Palestinian homes from demolition. Richard Purcell's Testimony ISM activist Richard Purcell testified that the group of activists had gathered to prevent the demolition of a Palestinian house. They called out to the bulldozer operators and went into the house, which caused them to back out. Purcell recalled that the bulldozer operators were aware of their presence and didn't open fire. However, during the incident, they turned towards a previously demolished house, where Rachel was standing in front of the bulldozer. It was in this moment that the tragic incident occurred. Israeli snipers and house demolitions, human rights activists and Palestinians claimed that the house demolitions were accompanied by gunfire from Israeli snipers. Dr. Ali Musa, the director of Rafa's hospital, mentioned a significant number of Palestinian casualties, including children, during the Al-Aqsa Intifada. The residents faced nightly shootings at their homes. Eyewitness account Richard, an ISM activist using the name Richard, described the incident, stating that it was inconceivable that the bulldozer operator did not see Rachel Corey since she was practically looking into the cabin. Rachel stood in front of the bulldozer, 
and at one point, she briefly stood on top of a mound of earth in front of it. Despite shouts from the activists to stop, the bulldozer kept moving, and Rachel was tragically pulled underneath it. Tom Dale's account, SM member Tom Dale also commented on the incident and stated that Rachel stood unmoving in front of the bulldozer. He mentioned that just before she was crushed, Rachel briefly stood on top of the mound of earth in front of the bulldozer, and her head was above the level of the blade, making her clearly visible to the bulldozer operator. Joe Carr's account, American ISM activist Joe Carr, who used the name Joseph Smith, provided an affidavit in which he described how Rachel Corey knelt down in front of the bulldozer, waving her arms and shouting. As the bulldozer approached, she climbed onto the rubble pile, making her head and upper torso visible to the operator. Despite the activist's attempts to stop the bulldozer, it continued forward, and Rachel was pulled underneath it. During the days following the incident, various accounts and witness testimonies raised questions about whether the bulldozer operator saw Rachel and the circumstances that led to her tragic death. These differing perspectives contributed to the ongoing controversy and debate surrounding the incident. Israeli Accounts of the Incident The Israeli side of the story regarding Rachel Corey's death revolves around the bulldozer operator's perspective and official investigations carried out by the Israeli Defense Forces, IDF. Bulldozer Operator's Statement The bulldozer operator, interviewed on Israeli TV, claimed that he had no idea Rachel Corey was in front of him at the time of the incident. He cited limited visibility and difficulty hearing while operating the bulldozer. He suggested that Corey might have been hidden or taking cover. IDF Video and Testimony The IDF produced a video that provides insight into the limited visibility from inside the cockpit of a Caterpillar D9 bulldozer. The video aimed to support the argument that the bulldozer operators might not have seen Corey as she attempted to prevent the demolition. It showcased the challenges posed by the bulldozer's design, including narrow, double-glazed, bulletproof windows and obstructed views. IDF officers' testimony, during the civil suit brought by Corey's parents in 2011, an IDF officer testified that Corey and other activists had spent hours trying to block the bulldozers under his command. He emphasized the dangers posed by the activists in a war zone, as Palestinian militants used abandoned homes as firing positions and sought cover among foreign activists. He stated that he had issued warnings and attempted to disperse the activists using tear gas. Autopsy Report an autopsy was conducted on Rachel Corey, indicating that her cause of death was attributed to pressure on the chest, mechanical asphyxiation, along with fractures of ribs and vertebrae. Tear wounds in the right lung with hemorrhaging in the pleural cavities were also noted. IDF Operational Investigations The IDF's operational investigations, as seen by The Guardian, concluded that Corey was not run over by the bulldozer but was instead struck by falling debris most likely a slab of concrete, while standing behind a mound of earth. The report emphasized that her death was a tragic accident and was not a result of the bulldozer rolling over her. The IDF report indicated that the bulldozer operators had not seen Corey due to her positioning and limited visibility from the bulldozer's cab. The IDF maintained that the incident was an unfortunate accident rather than intentional. The controversy surrounding Rachel Corey's death continued as her family and supporters disputed the findings of the IDF's investigation, citing contradictions with eyewitness reports and questioning the transparency and credibility of the investigation. Reactions to Rachel Corey's death were varied and included responses from her family, politicians, human rights organizations, and the media. Here are some key reactions. Corey's family in 2012, Rachel Corey's father, Craig Corey, expressed the view that there were shortcomings in the bulldozer operator's visibility and called it gross negligence. He maintained that the operator should have known what was in front of the bulldozer and that the incident was avoidable with better precautions. Political Reactions U.S. Representative Brian Baird introduced a resolution in the U.S. Congress calling for a thorough investigation into Corey's death. 
However, the House of Representatives took no action on the resolution. Yasser Arafat, the first president of the Palestinian Authority, offered his condolences and promised to name a street in Gaza after Rachel Corey. He expressed that Corey was not just the daughter of her parents but also the daughter of all Palestinians. In 2003, the U.S. Green Party called for an investigation into Corey's death by Israeli forces. In August 2012, U.S. Ambassador to Israel Dan Shapiro criticized the Israeli investigation into Corey's death, stating that it was unsatisfactory, not sufficiently thorough, credible, or transparent. Human Rights Organizations Amnesty International called for an independent inquiry into the incident and called for the suspension of the transfer of U.S.-made bulldozers to Israel. Human Rights Watch published a report raising questions about the impartiality and professionalism of the IDF's investigation. They highlighted issues such as hostile questioning of witnesses and a lack of interest in reconciling soldiers' testimonies with other eyewitness accounts. NGO Monitor, an Israeli group, criticized other NGOs and defended the verdict, stating that Corey's death was unnecessary and attributing blame to the ISM for her death. Media Rachel Corey's death received significant media attention, partly due to her American nationality. Journalist Sandra Jordan commented that the death of an American received more attention than the deaths of hundreds of Palestinians under similar circumstances. Some media commentators, such as Bradley Burston, acknowledged that Corey's death was accidental but emphasized the tragic nature of incidental killings and the need to learn from such incidents to prevent future casualties. Charlie Wolfe's derogatory remarks about Corey on a radio show in the UK were deemed in breach of broadcasting standards by media regulator Ofcom. Rachel Corey's death became a symbol of the broader issues related to the Israeli-Palestinian conflict and the dangers faced by international activists working in conflict zones. It sparked debate and discussions on these topics and led to calls for further investigations and increased awareness of the challenges faced by activists in the region. There were criticisms of Rachel Corey's actions and the activities of the International Solidarity Movement, ISM, particularly from those who saw her actions as misguided or provocative. Criticism of Corey's Actions Some critics argued that Rachel Corey knowingly placed herself in a dangerous situation by being in a closed military area where entry was forbidden to civilians. They contended that, given the ongoing violence in the region, any thinking person would have distanced themselves from the area. Judge Oded Gershon who presided over the Israeli court's ruling on Corey's death, stated that her death was the result of an accident she brought upon herself. Role of the International Solidarity Movement, ISM Some critics, like Tom Gross, argued that the activities of ISM activists, including Rachel Corey, undermined Israeli army operations, particularly in addressing the movement of weapons through tunnels near protest sites. Critics claimed that the ISM's main purpose was to use foreign activists to increase international awareness of Palestinian suffering. They suggested that the media paid more attention to the death of foreign volunteers, like Rachel Corey, compared to the deaths of Palestinians. Activities of Corey's Parents Rachel Corey's parents, Cindy and Craig, have faced criticism for their continued efforts to promote peace and raise awareness about the Palestinian cause. Some critics viewed their activities as perpetuating an anti-Israel narrative. It's important to note that public opinion on these matters varies widely, and Rachel Corey's story remains a subject of controversy and debate, with supporters seeing her as a principled activist and critics viewing her actions and the ISM's activities differently. Lawsuits In the United States Corey's family and several Palestinians filed a federal lawsuit against Caterpillar Incorporated in the United States District Court for the Western District of Washington. The lawsuit alleged that Caterpillar supplied bulldozers to the Israelis despite knowing they would be used in ways that violated international law. The case was dismissed by a federal judge in November 2005 for lack of subject matter jurisdiction and, alternatively, on the merits. In Israel 
In 2010, Corey's parents filed a lawsuit against the Israel Defense Forces and the Israeli Defense Ministry in the Haifa District Court, seeking compensation. The court ruled against Corey's family in August 2012, finding her death was an accident for which she was responsible. The judge absolved the IDF of any wrongdoing. Memorial Events After Rachel Corey's death, memorial events took place around the world. In Rafa, posters and graffiti praising her were posted. In 2008, her parents commemorated the fifth anniversary of her death in Nablus, where they dedicated a memorial to her. In 2011, Iran named a street in Tehran after Rachel Corey. These events and legal actions reflect the ongoing impact of Rachel Corey's death and the controversy surrounding it. Artistic Tributes The Skies Are Weeping In 2004, composer Philip Munger wrote a cantata called The Skies Are Weeping about Rachel Corey. It was originally scheduled to premiere in Alaska, but objections and concerns about the performance led to its withdrawal. My Name is Rachel Corey My Name is Rachel Corey is a play composed from Corey's journals and emails, compiled by actor Alan Rickman and journalist Catherine Viner. The play was directed by Rickman and first presented in London in early 2005. It was later revived in October 2005 and performed in various locations, including New York City, the Edinburgh Festival, and Israel. Musical Tributes Singer Billy Bragg wrote a song called The Lonesome Death of Rachel Corey, in memory of her. The song was later included on his 2011 album Fight Songs. Irish folk music slash world music group Keela included an instrumental track titled Rachel Corey on their 2015 album Suicidos. Pittsburgh singer Mike Stout composed a song about Rachel Corey included in his album War and Resistance. David Rovix wrote the song The Death of Rachel Corey included in his album Return. Documentaries Several documentaries have been made about Rachel Corey's death and its context, including The Killing Zone by British Channel 4 and When Killing is Easy by the BBC, which examines her death along with other incidents involving foreigners in Israel. Additionally, there is a documentary called Rachel from an Israeli perspective. These artistic tributes and documentaries aim to commemorate Rachel Corey's life and raise awareness of her story. MV Rachel Corey In 2010, an 1800-ton vessel was purchased by the Free Gaza Movement in Dundalk, Ireland, for €70,000. The ship was named the MV Rachel Corey in honor of Rachel Corey. It was intended to join a flotilla heading to Gaza to break the blockade. While the flotilla was intercepted by the Israeli Navy, the MV Rachel Corey continued its journey toward Gaza. It was intercepted by the Israeli Navy on June 5, 2010, and diverted to the port of Ashdod for inspection. Symbolic Gravestone in Iran On the 12th anniversary of Rachel Corey's death, a symbolic gravestone bearing her name was installed in a Tehran cemetery to honor her. The commemoration of martyrs of the movement of the Islamic World staff placed her symbolic gravestone alongside 12 others. Revelation of Caterpillar Surveillance In 2017, it was revealed that Caterpillar had hired private investigators to spy on the family of Rachel Corey following her death in early 2003. Bibliography Rachel Corey's collected writings and memoirs were published under the title, Let Me Stand Alone, in January 2008 by W. W. Orton and Company. The ISBN is 978-0-393-06571-8. Additionally, Rachel Corey's Letter from Palestine is included in the book Voices of a People's History of the United States, edited by Howard Zinn and Anthony Arnove, published by Seven Stories Press. The ISBN is 978-1-58322-628-1.